Here it comes from the famous Conic Wheel Studios. It's the hype is right. What's up, guys? This is Nate from the Dirt Lifestyle YouTube channel. Hey, I'm Brad Koroff. I'm the owner here at Black Bear Off Road. I'm better known on social media as Jeep and Bubba. Hi, my name is Daryl Hudson. I'm vice president of JCR Off-Road and Victory 4x4. Howdy Hype is Right fans. My name is Andrew Collins. I'm the editor-in-chief of carbibles.com. Here to talk about five trucks and SUVs and uh, their hype worthiness. So let's get straight into it. Ford Bronco has the perfect level of hype. Just right. That is currently overhyped. I think the hype is right. Ford Bronco is a cool vehicle. It's a great Wrangler rival. It's got all the right specs, all the right mechanics. Uh, the powertrain options, all the different four wheel drive packages and stuff. It's incredible. Front and rear lockers from the factory, 35 inch tires from the factory. Uh, the looks of the two-door are just outstanding. Really good looking vehicle with some really cool technology packed into it. I think it's really gonna threaten the 4Runner market. I think it's gonna be a real good contender for that. Not sure it's quite a Jeep Wrangler contender. If you go on Jeep groups on Facebook or Jeep forums, all the Jeep people are very angry. <laughs> very angry about the Bronco, very self-conscious about their Jeep. So it's the clash of the Titans. I am one of the people who pre-ordered uh, one of these and it, whenever I pre-ordered it like a month in or two months in or whatever it was, it was like 180,000 pre-orders before me. So clearly the word is out that these things are cool and the specs look good. But at this point, I'm getting a little tired of hearing about it and I have yet to see one on the road. So we'll see once we get our hands on one and can drive it around and tear it apart and build parts for it and stuff. But uh, finally there's something coming back that can compete against the new Wrangler, so. While we're talking overhyped, I will transition neatly into the Tesla Cybertruck. Uh, I'm going the hype is right on this one. Underhyped. Overhyped for sure. Elon Musk said that he wanted to build a vehicle that is like a tank for the road. Anything he does, to me, is cool. <laughs> Not to be a uh, Tesla detractor per se, they made some cool stuff, but the Cybertruck does nothing for me. I do not like the design. I, I, I mean, I think that they have promised so much in terms of specs, they being Tesla, and they'll probably meet most of these specs. I mean, we're talking about a vehicle that's all electric. It's gonna be like faster than a Lamborghini, pretty much. Um, and it's going to be probably really capable in stock form. I get what they're doing. They want to make something that is anti-truck, like trucks have always had the same shape since trucks have been invented. So Tesla wanted to kind of flip the script on that and show something different. What's the craziest thing a truck could be? Uh, and even though it looks like, you know, a five-year-old drew it in <laughs> Koran, if it looks weird to you now, it's just because you don't realize it's 10 years ahead of us already. So it's definitely underhyped. Cybertruck's going to be cool whenever they get that out. But the reason I think that it's overhyped is people forget the fact that Tesla likes everything to be proprietary. They don't want you playing with their cars, even when you own them. So I think that the aftermarket support, um, it's gonna, it just won't even come close to what you're gonna be able to get out of a Bronco or a Jeep or a Toyota Tacoma or something like that. I just have a hard time believing that Tesla is gonna let other people play with their cars that much. I don't, it's dumb. Uh, and I also don't think we're gonna see it on the road. 2022, 2023, uh, I, I, wouldn't count on, I wouldn't count on seeing these. If anyone is going to make a real deal, actual truck that you can buy that's usable, I feel like it's gonna be Tesla, just because they have, have so much history with electric vehicles, doing electric vehicles right. Uh, all the tech in it is addicting. I think charging a vehicle sucks. And I definitely don't wanna to have to find a charging station, you know, in the middle of the desert or in the woods or, you know what I mean, so. I myself am an avid off-roader and I like to play with these toys, put them on giant tires, put lockers in them, all this stuff. And I don't know how much of that aftermarket support is actually gonna be available for the Tesla.
as someone who owns two Land Rovers, I am sorry to say the Land Rover Defender is overhyped. Overhyped? I'm gonna say the hype is just about right on that thing. Too hyped. I don't think that people kind of in the off-road segment really talk about Land Rover. It is way too much money. I know it's a Land Rover. I know they've changed the styling. I know it's this iconic thing. But it doesn't really capture the je ne sais quoi that made the old school Defender fun. And it's mostly because the off-road market is so competitive today. I think that if they came out with this exact same car 10 years ago, it would be super competitive. Tons of horsepower. I think the new one is like, 500 available in 500 horsepower for the v8 i mean that's that's a lot of horsepower and i think they can go off-road technically but i wouldn't want to take this thing off-road at the price point it's at i could buy two wranglers for the price of this thing and even though this has like you know adjustable air suspension and all the other things you'd come to expect from land rover i don't think that it's gonna be able to meet the expectations of someone like me who is an avid off-roader, has owned multiple off-road vehicles and would have a high demand for one of these. And the front end, it's awful. They like pulled a bunch of Jeepers and tried to figure out like what ugly grills and angry eyebrows they were putting on their vehicles. And they're like, you know what we can do? We can do this from the factory. So if you look at the Defender from the front, it's like it's got a squinty face. It's, it's gross. It doesn't have that kind of breeziness uh, the character that the old truck had. But, like I said, it is capable, it is comfortable, so I think we're, we're just right with that. The Jeep Gladiator is underhyped. Underhyped. That one might be sufficiently hyped as well. I think the hype is right. The hype on that is kind of cooled off. The internet was clamoring for a Jeep pickup truck for what felt like forever. But recently, I got to borrow a Jeep Gladiator and I actually got to go off-road with it by myself. No like Jeep babysitters or anything. They just gave me a factory Gladiator Rubicon, and you can get it from the factory with 37s with a 100,000 mile warranty, and it performed amazing off-road. Never, ever underestimate a Jeep. This thing right here is a Swiss Army knife. You can haul boats, you can uh, you can put your uh, camper behind it, you can go wheeling. They're very capable. You always hear the kind of questions, what, should I get a Tacoma or should I get a Gladiator? You gotta go with a Gladiator. It's so much easier to put 37s, 40 inch tires underneath them. A bunch of driveline upgrades to make them reliable. You know, that's awesome. It didn't feel like a truck, really, whenever I was wheeling it, it just felt like a normal Jeep. Um, I didn't find it to be cumbersome. I found it to be really capable with those lockers. I, I love the stereo. Everything about it was great. I think the only con is the price, but honestly, this has changed my mind completely after being able to use one and beat on it a little bit. I know that it's just got a, uh, a V6 motor, but it's got great axle underneath it, a straight axle, Dana 44s. These things are awesome. Um, this is a real Jeep and it's a real off-road rig. And I think that it's real competition for all the other people in the, all the other companies in this space. Underhyped. Too hyped. I'm gonna dare to say that is currently underhyped. Slightly underhyped. Here's two things GM's never done well. A Hummer or an electric vehicle. I haven't been bombarded with information and advertising about this thing yet on social or on the internet. It's kind of dropped off the radar. I would like to see people talking about that thing a little bit more and <laughs> ideally it get closer to production. I feel like it is hyped like crazy but I don't think people are fully grasping how revolutionary it is to have a vehicle that could crab walk off road. Which is gonna help because this thing looks huge. And can go zero to 60 in like three seconds or something like that and have a thousand horsepower. It's like they took an H2 and then just blew it up with a pump until like it has half of a wide body kit and everything's super round and bulbous and inflated, so. And I really like the design. I like the kind of gimmicky roof it had. I don't care that it's got a thousand horsepower or whatever and it looks cool. It's General Motors, it's just not gonna work. I don't know how safe uh, most of us off-roaders would feel having like this limited uh, fuel source essentially, which is what the battery is, 
for like really long trips because if you run out of gas, you can always get a gas can, go to the gas station and fill it up. But I think that 300 plus miles or whatever it says the range is gonna be uh, is makes it to where this could actually be a realistic off-roader. I'm not gonna buy an EV, but I think it's cool that it's available and it's starting to become available without so many concessions. And that's kind of the way everything is going. So I think we have to embrace it. So hopefully we can embrace cool things. So uh, hopefully that's enough of a rundown. My name again is Andrew Collins. Thanks for having me and check out carbibles.com.